Stroll down Euclid Avenue and it's a kaleidoscope of brand new buildings, thriving businesses, tourists, and opportunity. Located in the heart of University Circle, the area has acted as an incubator for growing institutions. We were founded to buy land for the strategic growth of our institutions, and I think we succeeded wildly in that regard. Established in the late 1950s, the University Circle Development Fund, later University Circle, Inc., aligned the Cleveland Clinic, Case Western Reserve University, and more than 30 other medical, educational, and cultural institutions in the area, tied together with one specific goal, expansion. We spend between those institutions billions of dollars a year, and those billions of dollars a year have a, a multiplier effect on the Cleveland economy. Chris Romaine was president of UCI for 16 years before stepping down to run for county executive, presiding over an era of exponential growth for the organization. And we've grown jobs to the point that we're about 50,000 jobs here in a neighborhood that's only a square mile. A square mile bursting at its seams. Huff, Glenville, Fairfax, Little Italy, East Cleveland, they're all incredibly historic places and they've got a new lease on life because this growth is beginning to matriculate in neighborhood blocks nearby. But some are asking the question, as University Circle's footprint expands and the status continues to climb, are nearby communities being left in the shadows? Nestled in the heart of University Circle is a quiet cobblestone dead end. Hesler is old. It's not perfect. That's its character. That's its nature. For Eric Ambro, it's not just the quaint charm of Hesler Street that's important. It's the history built on its stones. And that's me in my Sergeant Pepper outfit before the Beatles started copying us. Ambro has lived on Hessler Street for more than 50 years. When he first arrived, the tiny street was a haven for Cleveland's counterculture scene. We never thought of ourselves as being part of the hippie culture. We were just sort of that way naturally. In 1969, the surrounding neighborhood was rapidly changing and development was looming just around the corner. Concerned about the changes, Ambro and the other residents formed the Hessler Street Neighborhood Association to protect the historic homes. They celebrated the inauguration with a small block party. The music was just impromptu jam sessions on somebody's porch. The community made it a tradition, and by 1975, the annual event helped motivate the designation of Hessler Street as the first official historic district in Cleveland. Over the years, that celebration grew. So we had no trouble getting musicians. We actually had trouble telling some of them that they couldn't play because they had too many. The fair continued for 50 years at its height, attracting more than 20,000 visitors to the tiny road. But in 2019, the music stopped. I opened the email and they, the development site was outlined on the, in red. And I thought, wow, how, where, what is this? To the surprise of Hessler residents, University Circle Inc. outlined plans for new residential development on the historic street. UCI called the meeting and the developers said, this is what we're going to build on your street, whether you like it or not. In September 2021, the garage that once housed the Hessler Street Fair Museum was torn down to make room for the new construction. It was a loss to the Hessler community, especially Ambrose, who curated the museum. There's plenty of places to build residential without squeezing an inappropriate new building onto this lot. Residents hope the street's landmark status will help prevent the construction from moving forward. I understand change is constant. I mean, we fully understand that. Um, but I think we also need to, to remember that, you know, change is not always for the best. The history of this street is something worth fighting for. Just across Euclid Avenue, the attitudes and accents change. I have my own style, and if you don't like it, too bad. Terry Tarantino, a name and personality fit for a Scorsese film, is the longtime owner of Little Italy mainstay La Dolce Vita. 
This place is a bundle of fun and a bundle of craziness, and uh, it is La Dolce Vita. The restaurant opened its doors in 1989, and the location choice was strategic. Uh, the value in Little Italy was great, and the proximity to Case and uh, University Circle being as attractive as it is. As University Circle grew, so did neighboring Little Italy. With the growth came more housing and a community-based arts and culture scene of its own, with art studios, galleries, and a brand new museum. Asel Russo, father of the award-winning directors, the Russo Brothers, founded the Italian American Museum of Cleveland in the heart of Little Italy. This is a very special, unique neighborhood. You can savor it and taste it and appreciate it. Down the hill, past the shiny state-of-the-art medical centers on Euclid and 105th Street, Caramu House's strong roots are what sustain them through the changing times. We talk about the national great treasures that we have, whether it's the Cleveland Museum of Art, the Severance Hall, and the Cleveland Orchestra. Uh, Caramu ranks with them. When Tony Sias became president and CEO of Caremu House in 2015, the wealth of historic and cultural significance within the walls of the first African-American theater in the country was palpable. Look whose signature I found in the guest book. That's Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Caremu House has been the touch point for black artists since before the Harlem Renaissance. The theater is located in the heart of Fairfax, a community geographically within walking distance from University Circle, but in terms of investment, worlds apart. Although our historical trajectory has not been the same in terms of the same kind of investment, I feel like Caramu's current renaissance is putting us back on the right position in arts and culture, not just only in Cleveland, but in the country. Today, Caramu House is celebrating a surge in support, finishing up a massive renovation and welcoming visitors to the new space. But we're optimistic about that impact of getting people to come and be a part of the Fairfax community, celebrate the accomplishments of black folks, educate the community around the issues that are confronted, and then activate audiences around positive change. That message isn't falling on deaf ears. It's echoing in the marble halls of some of Cleveland's most iconic institutions, sheltered in the heart of University Circle. The relationship that we have with our community is the most important thing possible. Music without an audience doesn't matter. It doesn't exist. Severance Hall's presence is enormous, not just structurally, but culturally, reaching 160,000 people a year with their music. We have 102 musicians from, I believe, 14 different countries, all working together every day uh, as this organism, right? This is a living art, and we're not museum pieces. We have to continue to be relevant and to serve the people who are, who are living here today. Its mission is reflected in its community outreach. You know, over many years, we have worked a lot to take the orchestra out of this building. We start the conversation with what can we do to bring value to your community? The orchestra organizes neighborhood engagement, free performances, and educational programs. We open the doors to Severance Hall every year for the MLK Celebration Concert which uh, has a community chorus and unauditioned anyone who wants to sing, who wants to make music can come and sing. Using art to bridge the gap between artists and the community they serve. It's a challenge that artist Gary Williams is familiar with. People like my artwork then, huh? All right. Oh yeah. There are so many people who live within walking distance of the art museum who've never been there. Perhaps they didn't feel welcome or invited, but maybe they just don't know that it's available, that this is available and something that they can relate to. Williams and Robin Robinson runs in Kofa Fine Arts in Glenville. One mural at a time, they are creating a path between those in the Glenville community and the world of art straight down 105th Street. Sankofa wants 105th Street to be that arts destination, and it's a natural progression from 
the Caribou House to the Art Museum to 105th Street. And making sure the community is there with them every step of the way. We've gone door to door to actually talk to people and find out what do you think that is important for this mural to say to the community. But for Williams, the value art holds is much deeper than a few coats of paint. The first mural that we did in Glenville was Our Lives Matter. What sticks out in my mind most is, is a young lady who came up and she had, you know, tears in her eyes. And, and she said, you know, this is so important that we understand that our lives do matter. That touched me. That touched me.